There are many display object methods that are available to us in ActionScript. The movie clip object is a descendant of the display object. So it gets to inherit all the properties, all the methods that display objects have, as well as having a bunch of its own. So what I want to do here is just cover a few of the basics. Add child is one of them. So we've already got that in our code. We're adding to the stage our two cogs. If we wanted to find out what what level they're on, because Flash will stack things on the stage, give a different depth to each thing, a different level to each item that it's putting on there. So we can find out what the current depth is for one of these objects. So we could say this dot get child index. And you can see through the code complete here, it's asking me for a child, a display object child. I'm going to pass in C1. Now, I've already put Simon on the stage, and then through our code, we've added C and C1. So this should be the third thing. So 0, 1, 2. That should be the depth that comes up. And I forgot my closing parentheses right there. There we go. All right. So 2. That's what came up in our trace window, in our output window here. Trace is like the console.log that you get in JavaScript. Now, if I wanted to switch objects, we can say that we want to swap children. Um, so this is the stage, and on the stage we want to swap children. It asks for two display objects. So C and C1. Those are my two display objects. And I'm going to once again trace out the depth of C1, what level C1 is on. So the first time we look at it here, you can see that it's on level 2, and then it's on level 1 after it has swapped the depth for C and C1. So this line right here, it's just swapping them, putting one on top of the other. If we want to get rid of one of the items, we can say that we want this remove child C. We're going to get rid of that one. If I run that, there. I've only got two left on the stage because we got rid of one of them. If we want to find out um, how many children are on the stage, that is a property called num children. Let's trace that one out as well. There we are. Third line of my statement down here. We've got 2 was the original depth of C1, 1 is the new depth of C1, and 2 is the number of children after we removed that one. Another command similar to remove child, we can say remove children. And we can put in here, if we want, a beginning number and an ending number. So remove them on levels 3 through 10. If we put nothing in there at all, it's just going to remove everything. There we are. Blank stage. All done. Everything's gone. The uh, last thing I want to show you is, in the library, I had created another object. So we had the cog. I also created an axle which is just a little round piece to fit in the middle. So we've been using this, 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 this. However, we could, if we wanted, put something inside of the cog. So I'm going to add an axle. I'm going to use the variable A to create a new axle. There we are. So a new axle object has been created. And then we're going to put that inside of the first cog. Run this. Oh, better uncomment our remove children line here. So we have something to put on there. There we go. There we are. So there we are. In that cog, we have placed an axle 
It's right in the center. The registration point for both objects was dead center. So one is nested right inside the other one. And you'll notice that this is turning at the same rate of speed. It's not that the axle is turning on its own. It's because it's inside of this cog that it is also rotating.